The use of a lime rick is an age-old tradition used to make mortar and plaster. When the Europeans first arrived here, the first thing they noticed were large mountains of oyster shells along the beach. Apparently the Native Americans would gather their oysters, eat their oysters, and then throw the shells in the same location over and over again. So when the Europeans arrived, they saw these huge mounds of oyster shells, and to them that was an immediate gold mine. They set about the business of building oyster lime kilns, burning the oyster shells, and creating lime putty. That allowed them to build their foundations, build their fireboxes, and build their chimneys. Jerry and Sam Eide of Hilltop Restorations were very helpful in building this kiln. Jerry and I had talked about how important it was to recreate the technology used to make lime putty, and it was a forgotten art. Uh, we were able to contact Williamsburg, and they were very helpful in helping us design the Jamaican-style kiln, a round, circular, 16-foot diameter kiln. The lime kiln burned for approximately 30 hours, which meant that it had to be manned at all times in the event that high winds came along or anything unusual happened. This was the first time we had lit a Jamaican kiln, so we knew it would work, but we were concerned about the amount of smoke that it might generate. In the beginning, the kiln did generate a lot of smoke, much to the neighbor's concern, but after the fire got going and settled down, it was like any other large bonfire. With temperatures in excess of 1800 degrees, we will drive the carbon dioxide out of the shells. We were able to work with the Matunik Oyster Bar and they supplied the 3,500 pounds of oyster shells. This caused us to give some thought to how this was done in the 18th century. We tried to extrapolate 3,500 pounds of oyster shells being hauled by carts and oxen. And the bottom line is that this is a lot of work. No matter how you shake the stick, it's a lot of work. Once the wood all burns away, only the shells and embers remain. The shells are then put into large bins of water where an exothermic reaction takes place. The oyster shell breaks down and becomes slaked lime. After the exothermic reaction, the lime putty becomes very malleable. It's a soft white lime putty, but it still has lots of shards and pieces of unburned wood and unburned oyster shells in it, so we run it through a screening process. As we screen the mortar, it drops down into what we refer to as a lime keep. The lime keep is an oak lined hole in the ground where we will store the mortar. After the lime putty has sat in the lime keep for several weeks, it's ready to be taken out and mixed with sand. Since lime putty is very different than modern mortar, it, you cannot mix it in a, in a modern mixer. The sand resists the coating of lime putty, so we use a process called ramming, where large wooden rams are used to pound the sand and the mortar together. 